Okay, welcome back to the observation. Let's just try our best here. So, I realized today, Sunday, that my flight to China, Hong Kong, didn't leave at 1 a.m. on Monday night. It leaves 1 a.m. on Sunday night. Sorry, I'm getting a call. 1 a.m. on Sunday night. I try to film these on Monday, but usually and have them go out on Wednesday. Well, guess what? I just realized I'm flying to China in a few hours. And so, you know, I think we have to rip the observation sooner than we wanted to, but that's okay. I'm headed to Hong Kong for Bitcoin Asia and Ordinals. And I hope to see you there if you're going or if you just live in the Hong Kong area, it'd be great to connect. I am there until Saturday. And I've never been to China before. I've only been to Singapore in Asia, which is obviously very different than Hong Kong. First, I'm flying to Taipei, actually. Ignore that noise that is my heater turning on. Because for some reason, New York City wants to be cold. It's been rainy and cloudy, and you know how I feel about New York City. I am so close to getting out. I am so close to buying a home somewhere and just forgetting it all. Let's just let it sniff it. It sounds like a dog. I call it a puppy, this noise. Okay. I just want this to pass. It's still going. It's been one of those days, man. I hate to be negative. I really don't like being negative. I try to be an optimist, but we have another thing I shoot and set up all these get the camera and everything myself with a tripod in my battery I don't know where all my batteries are gone I've gone only had one battery left so this battery has 23 minutes left I'm gonna try to give 23 solid minutes of pure fire if this allows me to okay I'm just gonna keep going so first I'm flying to Taipei and then I'm flying to Hong Kong and there are direct flights from New York City. I just didn't book one of those flights. I think I needed to take a little bit of a break. I am excited to be flying China Airlines, so I'll do a vlog on China as well. I still owe everyone a Poland vlog as well, so I'm editing it. You know, I'm just too much of a perfectionist with sometimes the content I put out there. So I'll get those out. Something that I really like in New York City currently is this restaurant I went to on Friday called Libertine. It is an a la carte French restaurant and I really like the vibes in there. I like the, obviously the French flag has the same colors as the American flag, but it feels really patriotic in a way for France and just really vibey. I love their long bar. It's great to have a cocktail and order the eggs, the oofs or the bread and butter and they just bring you a hunk of butter and uh, a baguette and so that's really nice. I recommend going there if you're in the West Village. I don't think it's been around too long and the New York Times, the New York Times did write it down so just be aware of that but I do think it's like a fun drink spot, place to meet people if you are in the city and I don't think people are talking about it. Obviously this isn't paid, I just like to share where I've been recently. I went out with my friend Elena on Friday and that was really fun. So. This summer, I really want to travel a lot. I think I might put my apartment up for rent. I'm not sure, I'm just throwing it out there. If you do have a friend that would like to rent a, an apartment in the West Village, let me know because I think I, I'm, I think I could rent it out. I would be open to it. Places I'm thinking of going is Venice, Capri, Biarritz. If you have any European recommendations, let me know, but I'm feeling like a Euro summer. After, and I'm flying, after I fly to Hong Kong, I'm then flying to Phoenix to see my mom for Mother's Day. So I'll be, I've been gone quite a bit as I want to be because I think living alone has been really hard for me in New York City. Like this is the first time I've lived in my own place and I don't know if it's the weather, I don't know if I'm just getting older and I can't handle it anymore, but I do not enjoy being in my apartment all day by myself, even though, even though I have a lovely place and I love my spot. It's super difficult. Okay, so I'm in a group chat with some of my friends. It is a crypto Catholic group. If you'd like to be added to it, let me know and I'll add you to it. We have like a little telegram chat. We, we we don't like have a little telegram chat. We have a telegram chat. 
We just post little things. There's about six people in it right now. It's very small, but I do want to build it into a larger community because I love my faith and I would love to bring more people into it. So if you would like to join our group, join. I did go to the Young Adults Catholic Mass the other day and I think it's really kind of funny when, <laughs> first of all, young adults, that's some someone that's, you know, a below 18 that is almost an adult in my book. Young adults in New York City means that these people age from 19 to 45 that are at this mass. They're basically just, a, it's like a singles mass. There's also couples there as well, so I don't wanna say it's just singles, but there's a lot of, it's to get people together, you know? Oh my gosh, if this heater goes off again, okay. I went with my friends to mass and we went to the mass itself, which was really beautiful. And then we went to the happy hour afterwards where they try to, you know, get you to meet people in your community, friends. And it also feels like they're always pushing dating. Oddly enough, there was this woman who came up to us I won't say her name, it was a cool, interesting name. And she was asking, she was. She said she wanted to be a first time matchmaker, which was really funny. And I that, I do not want to be made up. I do not want to be match made. But she was like getting our information and she goes, I said, my name's Aubrey. I'm, my name's Aubrey Strobel. And she typed it out and she goes, oh, why did I know that? And I was like, I don't know. Why do you know that? And she said that I've been on this like Catholic hit list for some men in New York City, which I think is really funny. Um, and that she's been diligent to see me, some light stalking, which she could have just said it that way to vet if I was single or not, which I thought was just hilarious. But yeah, they're really trying to get people together. Um, that is not why you should join the Catholic, crypto Catholic group, but you should just join it anyway if you'd like to come to mass and it's really fun. Okay, something I would like to talk about, and I shared it on my Twitter earlier, is this Scott Galloway clip. So Scott Galloway, he's a professor at UCLA, I think Berkeley and Stern. He put out this, I think he's doing press for his book, first of all, so this is why he's on a bunch of different television shows, but he, oh my gosh, talk about media trained. As someone who does PR and comms, this man really goes and he crushes online interviews. Like, I would give this man five stars, 10 stars, if I was reviewing his media presence. He's just so articulate. Obviously he knows all the facts he wrote the book, but he just really dials it home, but in a very powerful, evocative way. And the Scott Galloway clip that I saw, I think it was on uh, MSNBC, he was talking about, and I'm just quoting what he was said in this interview, in this clip, for my listeners here, if you didn't see the clip, because I think it's worth watching, but I'll just say what he said. He said, for the first time in our nation's history, our 30 year olds are not doing as well as their, his or her parents were at 30. This heater will not stop. I'm so sorry. He said that our social compact is breaking down. He said people 30 to 34, 60% of them in 1990 had at least one child. And today that number is 27%. And that means people are not investing in America because they are not having children. They are not optimistic. This is not an optimistic generation, not because it's the generation's fault, but because the socioeconomic playground has totally changed. And so people are opting out of America. They're not optimistic about it. They're not having kids. Young people are not having sex. They're not meeting, which is probably why I'm getting trying to get people are trying to set me up at the Catholic meetup, but the pool of socially and economically viable men shrinks every day. And so I want to say to all the women out there who are very frustrated, it's not just you. It is not just you. And this generation, they look up and they see exceptional wealth across Gen X, about across boomers and certain industries, and they're really struggling. Our purchasing power, not just this generation, but collectively, everyone's purchasing power has gone down and the incumbents create artificial scarcity. Housing prices have gone from 290K to 420K in the last four years. That's not because housing, these properties are increasing in value, that's because the, the dollar is inflated and things are costing more money and homes are costing more money. So people my age and in the millennial generation cannot buy homes the way they used to. Uh, COVID relief has been flooding the markets all on the youth's credit cards. Every day it's in our face that we're failing and we've totally lost the script we, this generation is more anxious, they're more depressed, and they're more overweight and addicted. And I can honestly say that I feel in my friend group in New York City that 
my friends talk about anxiety a lot. They talk about depression a lot. I don't know about overweight, this ozempic. Well, I guess that goes back to addicted. Everyone, everyone's on something. Like there's very few people who are not on some medication of some kind. And I personally am not on any medications and I really fear getting on medications, but I've thought about it before being in New York City about getting on, you know, some depression medication or anxiety medication. But this is affecting our entire generation and a lot of people feel this way. Something that really pisses me off is that the government is banning TikTok now. I don't love China involved in data harvesting and, and all of that. I'm going to table that argument to say that there are a bunch of young people who are using TikTok as technology to make more income. And now the government is threatening to take that away from young people who have been able to be entrepreneurial in their pursuits and get out there and start businesses and run ads and monetize as content creators. And I think that is insane. I think young people should be more pissed and I think we've been way too passive with the way the world is going and our government and the life that we've been handed. And I think we're just supposed to sit there and take it. And I think, you know, if you look at the Gen X generation who are sort of angsty and wrote a lot of like rock songs that were like really grunge and, and really, you know, anti-government and wanting to stand up for what's right, they really made that into their art. And I feel like we, this generation doesn't do that. Gen Z does some sort of like political theater. They get out there and they, they do some political theater. Millennials, I don't think we are pissed off enough about the world that's been handed to us and the fact that the government has been putting all their, putting so much debt on our credit cards for the future and that life is not good. And also to all the parents who look at your children, I don't know how many parents are watching this show, but if you're a child of a boomer parent who is angry at you, you should show them this clip and let them know that it is not just you. That's not why you don't have a home. That's not why you can't get a girlfriend. That's not why all these things. It is because the world looks very much different than it did in the 80s and the 90s. It is not those times anymore. Unfortunately, it's not those times. I think we, we should be really frustrated. It's not a joke. It's not funny. It's not cute. And the US is doing this to its people, just think about it. If we are not creating more people, if there are not ch more children being born, who are we investing in? It is not an optimistic country if we are not investing in the youth. And Scott Galloway has another graphic to show to show tax dollars spent on younger people versus older people. It's spent mostly on older people. And sorry, most older people are unproductive in society and they're not adding anything. The young people, fewer dollars are going to, and they are trying to build society. We should be investing in our young people. I'm really fascinated to see how this comes out in the 2024 election and how we, who, where that younger vote goes to because the options aren't looking great for us right now. So it's really unfortunate. I am pissed. I am fed up with it. I'm feeling angry about it. And I think other people should too. That's why I'm sharing it here. And I, love to do a longer podcast on this in coming weeks or I would love to have Scott Galloway on the podcast actually because I think he really is the only person really speaking on this issue in a way that is poignant and deliberate and loud as it needs to be. So those are my thoughts. Um, if you enjoy this episode and you'd like to share it with a friend, please share it. Please like and subscribe. Also, if you have any recommendations for China, let me know. I don't know when I'll be back in New York next, but I have a lot to say on a few topics, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in. In the meantime, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll be back next week.